We've known each other for quite some time now, you and I. Of course, storytellers travel from place to place telling their tales. But this will mark the 100th time I've visited you here. 100 tales I've told. Oh, how far we've come since I first visited. I thought that this beautiful Halloween night would be the perfect time to celebrate the occasion. And of course, I had to have some help. I brought along some of the people I've met in my travels. You may remember some of them. With their help, I've put together something I know you will enjoy. So, I won't keep you in suspense. Our story tonight is about a man named Lance Kennedy. He will be telling you this story himself tonight. I'm afraid you won't be seeing me again until the end. So, until we meet again, gather close. Our tale is about to begin. I remember that night like it was yesterday. The night that I realized what I had created by accident. I'd invented a machine that could change the world. Some would call it destiny. An accident resulting in a life-changing conclusion. My machine would rewrite history books, retelling the stories we thought we knew. I remember sitting in my workshop that night, conjuring up all the wonderful possibilities that lay before mankind. Such a humble looking device. When I began the project of building it, I envisioned a new type of metal detector. A metal detector, but unlike any other, using high frequencies of electricity directed into the ground, the sound would travel through the dirt until it reached something more solid. When it did, the sound would return in the form of a low hum or a chime. That would tell me what sort of metal or material was in the ground beneath me. Everything resonates with a different frequency. Even under a deep level of soil, metal, stone, or even organic matter can emit a specific tone. So I was convinced that I could use this machine to pinpoint where precious metals were buried. I was a bit of a treasure hunter in my spare time, so the idea excited me. But I was unprepared for what I found when I first tested my device. You see, when the frequencies are sent into the ground, they return to my headphones with different patterns and tones, depending on what they come in contact with. The initial sounds are inaudible to human ears and would be undetectable without my device, which amplifies the signal after it travels to the ground. This is what I expected to hear when I put on my headset but what I heard was something far different.
our pit bull Jake had died almost two years ago. But I knew his bark, and that was it. I was stunned and confused, but I couldn't have been wrong. I had heard his bark through the headset when I passed the device over his grave. When the electronic pulses went into his body, the body of the dog, the sounds returned, accompanied by the sound of the dog barking as though it were alive. I didn't understand it, and I was fascinated, but I wanted to test this new discovery. That's when I had an impossible idea, one so outrageous and horrible it could be considered sacrilege, but I just had to try it. I'd heard the barking of a dog that died two years ago. That meant that a fraction of the animal's mind had somehow been preserved in its lifeless brain, and that the electricity from my machine had somehow awoken it. I began to understand what that meant. It means, as far as I can tell, that the mind is like a tape recorder, logging information as we go through life. That is how we learn, and also how we remember things. Our brains are storage bins for our recorded memories, and that storage and those memories, they don't go away. They don't disappear. Even in death, the memories are there. The body may die, and the cells may deteriorate. The shell may rot away from the bones. But the memories do not fade away. The storage is not lost. There has just never been a way to access them until now. My machine had somehow revived a part of our dog's mind and received a signal from the storage bin in its brain. What I had heard came from Jake's memories. Like a radio, I had tuned into the signal of his mind. And if my machine could do this with a dog, then why not with a human? It's okay. It's all gonna be okay now. I hope you remember to let the dog out. I don't feel like getting up to check. I feel so tired. Yes, dear. I'll be home soon. And yes, I know I'm a little late. But the roads are slippery in the rain. Yes, I know. Fine, I I'll be home soon, all right? I love you. Isn't there anything we can do, Doctor? I'm not sure how long I spent walking through the cemetery, listening in on the final thoughts of each person buried there. It was strange how easily I adapted to this new science, how quickly it ceased to puzzle me. In such a short time, I accepted this as normal, a strange new reality that seemed as normal as eavesdropping on another table in a crowded restaurant. Shameful, rude, but normal. It stopped being strange that I could hear the last few moments of a person's life, their final thoughts. It was as I said, listening to a tape recording. But even though the idea itself was no longer strange to me, the possibility still excited me. I could have spent all night staring off into nothingness, imagining the potential which had opened to me. But my thoughts were interrupted. As I sat alone in my workshop, a voice calling down the stairs to me, Honey, it's time for dinner. Come upstairs. Lance doesn't seem himself today.
He looks so distant, like his mind is somewhere else. I feel like I'm eating dinner alone. Well, if he isn't going to speak, then he won't mind if I turn on the TV. Our main story tonight, a girl found dead outside of her home. Police say her body fell from a third story window. So far, the reasons for her actions are unknown. More information will be available tonight when we interview the officer leading the investigation. Until more information is gathered, the girl's body is being kept at the hospital morgue for further examination. Now, back to Jill in the studio with tonight's weather. Local resident found dead in his own bathtub. Police are calling this a homicide, but so far there are no leads toward the identity of the... Police are calling this a homicide, but so far there are no leads toward the identity of the murderer. Officials are asking anyone with information to please come forward. I remember catching her down in my workshop. She looked terrified. She had seen what I'd been working on, but she didn't understand what she had found. She didn't realize what I had created. I could peer into a dead man's mind and hear his final thoughts. She wouldn't understand, but I couldn't help but wonder. Right now, in all of her terror, in all of her doubts, what would her last thought be? I pinned her picture to the wall with a feeling of pride, like placing a trophy on the mantelpiece. 
Now all that was left to do was to turn on my machine and hear what was going through her mind before she died. It was thrilling to me, like sneaking into someone's room and reading their journal. But like everyone knows, you can only get away with it for so long before somehow, at some point, you make a mistake. 911, what's your emergency? Yes, hello? My name is Barbara Kennedy. I'm calling to report, well, I think my husband is the murderer the police are looking for. That's a serious accusation. What makes you think your husband is a murderer? Well, I found a notebook. He left it on the table when he went out today. It has the names of the murdered people in it. And he has been out every day during the times the people were killed. All right, ma'am, just stay calm. Is your husband in the house right now? No, he went out again. Maybe while he's out, I could go into his workshop. That's where he's been spending all of his time. Maybe the evidence is down there. That's not a good idea, ma'am. You should leave the house and go somewhere safe. Are you on the way? Are the police coming here? Yes, we have three officers on the way, but... Then I'll meet them when they get here. I just want to check the workshop. Ma'am, I don't think... They're on their way. I'll be fine. I just want to take a look. I had made a terrible mistake. I had discovered so much, but it was all for nothing. I would never finish my machine. And now, no one but I knew what it was capable of. So I look back. I reflect on the choices I've made, wondering what could have been. I could have changed the world. I could have rewritten history books. I'm not going to apologize for what I've done only for what I was unable to do. This is my final thought. Well, I promised that I would return, and I'm glad to see you've waited for me. It gives me the opportunity to thank you for joining us. I trust you've enjoyed our visit, and I hope to see our friends from tonight join us again in the near future. Whether you've been watching since I began this channel, or this is your first time tuning in, thank you for watching, and happy Halloween.